Good morning, everybody. Sorry if I have a kind of little problem, but I got a call, so I hopefully will be able to present that, and uh, that will not be a coffee session. Uh, so, we'll discuss a little bit about the uh, uh, migration that we want to do in the CentOS infrastructure regarding uh, our Git server for sources and other projects. So just before we start, uh, how many people are active for a special interest group in CentOS already in the room? Some? Okay. Uh, how many people are already fed up, contributed already, working with fed packaging in Pagrier? Almost the same person? Fine. <laughs> so um, first mandatory slide, I guess, is who am I? Uh, if people still don't know me, my name is Fabien Hautin. I am involved in CentOS project for quite some years now, uh, and I'm doing sysadmin stuff, but also um, floor sweeping when needed, having a look at the build, uh, having bootstrap ArmGFP architecture. We'll discuss about ArmGFP because we have a new maintainer for that architecture. But basically, if something is broken, that's probably my fault, sorry. So, um, we'll discuss a little bit about, um, first, how we build the distribution for all the architecture, how CentOS is built. Um, well, the change that we introduce for the metaverse process, so when you just yum install something, how it works at the back, and the changes that we introduce in September. Uh, and finally, which is the biggest part of the talk, normally, uh, the Git, the new infrastructure for special interest group. So, is everybody aware of what SIG means, uh, or what is a special interest group in CentOS? If not, please read it your hand, I will just give you a short summary. Everybody's aware? Fine. Uh, and where do we want to go for the future after those Git migration? So, um, the first thing. CentOS was always being built with custom script uh, on one or two machines uh, when we started some time ago. And it was just covering one architecture, uh, i386, and then we finally had x86-64, which was a new beast 15 years ago. But uh, in the recent years, we decided to add more uh, architecture that we call alternate architecture, or alternative arch architecture, depending on how you want to call it. Um, and it was good. I think that with 7.7.1, we got multiple new architecture, like um, ARM64, uh, AF64 was the first one that we ever released as an alternate architecture. Then we had IBM Power PVC64, Big Indian, and then PVC64 for Little Indian. And uh, that's more or less following the process of what, what's happening upstream, so what exists at the rail side. But uh, we got an interesting idea of trying to build um, for an architecture that was not supposed to be working upstream, which is ARM HFP, so for Raspberry Pi, Kubitra, Banana Pi, and so on. <coughs> and it was great, until um, the special interest group decided to also build their package for those architecture. So after the, the new release, when they started to build in CBS, so everybody knows CBS, so the Community Build System, cbs.centos.org, in our Goji environment that is public, um, they wanted to also build against and for ARM64, p 64 and so on. But that means that for the next minor release of 7.7, I think that it was really a big issue with 7.4, we had to release the distribution in, in sync uh, and not wait for um, one, um, one more month to have, for example, ARM HFP covered or ARM64 covered. And that was really a problem because we needed to block the release for the special interest group so that all the architecture were covered and finally be able to build against those architecture in, in Koji. And clearly that was a problem. So we decided to tackle that first problem by changing the way we were building the distribution itself. And um, for that reason we decided to um, modify your custom script with a new set of custom script called Renzo uh, V2. So if you're interested about uh, what Remzo is, Remzo is a strange name, I'm not responsible for the name, but it still works and it does what it has to do, so that's fine. Um, it's uh, all on GitHub, so github.com slash centos slash Remzo, and you'll see how it works. 
So the goal was to, from, us, from Git, uh, to just build one source OPM that would be submitted for all the architecture in one shot. All the builds are happening in parallel. Everything centralized, meaning everything under the same control and not some, some builder there, some builder using another mock environment there. Everything using the same uh, technique, the same uh, mechanism. And supporting all the architecture. Uh, so far, here's the list of all the architecture that we cover for CentOS 7, and so that are automatically built from one source of PM um, in the new build system. So, I, it's probably not uh, something you can <laughs> see, but if you just go on GitHub, you have all the, if you're interested in the build system, you can see all the components from the Remzo. So basically, we have just controller, um, where we just define one task, one job. Uh, we just use something really simple like Beanstalk. If you know Beanstalk, we just use Beanstalk to queue the build job. And we have all the builders having worker uh, watching the, um, for the, the architecture, picking the job, sending the result back. Um, and, and centralizing on one machine, which is a B store, uh, centralizing all the builds and all the artifacts. Uh, apart from the build, the build system being completely hidden uh, for obvious reason, all the process is public and all the artifacts are also pushed uh, to, to, the, to, to the internet. So if you just go to buildlogs.centos.org, you will see both targets, you will see for architecture, all the build items, the timestamp, the mock config file that was used. Uh, the build logs, so you have the raw package. The only thing that is not done at, its, at that stage is a uh, European package signing and metadata for the real three. But other than that, everything is pushed uh, publicly. So that was one thing that clearly helped a lot, a lot the special interest group. Suddenly, so we were able to have all the architecture be built uh, in parallel, released at the same time. And so the special interest group were suddenly happy to be able to, from day one, resubmit all the new jobs in Koji uh, for, for example, Gluster, for, for Ceph, for LDO, and the other uh, special interest group. But we needed also to change that uh, at the middle of this process. When we started the special interest group process, um, if you have ever installed OpenStack or Gluster from CentOS, you will see that it's using hard-coded path. Instead of mirror list, it's using base URL pointing to mirror.centos.org, which was working fine. Uh, we still run from exclusively from the native machine. Um, so if, by the way, you want to sponsor a machine, contact me. But when, when a, a SIG was successful, that was a problem for us. Because suddenly, all the people coming and downloading from that mirror that's into the network, uh, it was really bad on our side because we were consuming more and more bandwidth. And Spawn sort of saying, hey, you are consuming too much bandwidth. I just shut down the machine or just limit the connection, etc." So we decided to offload all that to the external network. Because um, at the moment, we have more than 600 external mirrors that are spread around the world. So basically, North America and Europe, because it's difficult to get a machine in um, South America. We just have one machine in Brazil. Uh, we, just, we have one machine in Australia, one machine in South Africa, and three machines in Malaysia, or two machines in Malaysia and one in Asia, in um, Vietnam. All the rest is located in Europe and um, North America. But for the 600 machine, we have much more machines. So why not offloading all that to those machines? So thanks to um, Ansi uh, Johansson, Avis is not there today, but he's uh, really uh, active on the CentOS mirror list. We decided to change the process, um, and we announced that it's, it went live in September um, already. We decided to change that so that before the 7.6 release, everybody would be able to automatically get updates from uh, those 600 million. Um, for the special interest group, that means that if you are responsible for a special interest group, you just need to change the repo file uh, in your release file to be sure that in your release package, so that of course you point to mirror list instead of, um, of uh, mirror that's into the room. Uh, we were using a, a, an awful workaround with a yum variable to just make a difference between uh, x86-64 and the other architecture because if you go 
to mirror off that center row, you will see that the path is slash center slash seven slash OS slash x eighty sixty four. But for legacy reason, when ARM64 was released, it was decided to put that in another another tree. So it was slash add arch slash seven slash OS slash ARM64 ARch64. And so for the distribution distribution, it was a problem because they didn't know exactly which path to to expect. We don't need that yum variable anymore because all the logic is uh, processed uh, at the mirror list uh, process, uh, so in the list themselves. So. Um, that's one of the things we did. So basically, again, everything is uh, the schema and also the, the code is on GitHub if you want to have a look. So we have some, uh, at the back, uh, we have some mirror crawler that validates all the middle in loop. Uh, check also the ISO image, the checksum, that everything is good. We just remove or add new middle depending on um, if they are validated. And for the front end, for the mirrorless machine, uh, we have four machines at the moment. We just use uh, HTTPD, so Apache mod proxy balancer, and we have some Python instance at the back, uh, <coughs> understanding all the logic and checking GYP2 for redirection to the closest neighbor for, for your country. So if you have questions, we can discuss that uh, after the talk. <coughs> but there was still, um, oh yeah, that's the next slide. So just one example, uh, uh, it's really targeted for the special interest group, so they know exactly what it means, but uh, if we add a specific pass on the mirror network, uh, the way to call it is just, well, it's just a, uh, a call request. Uh, we just take some part of the URL and uh, you can query that and you get all the list. It works over IPv4 and IPv6 completely. So if you are going over IPv6, you get an IPv6 list that is validated as well. So. Now it's the biggest part. Um, we had last year in, uh, well last year, no, in 2017, so it's already, uh, at CERN we had a special day for the special tools group. And one of the remarks we had was, wait a minute, um, CentOS is built from sources that landed on git.centos.org for the spec file, the patches, the, the sources themselves in the Rufus side cache, so that's fine, but we would like to use the same uh, mechanism just to have some kind of review on through Git, etc. Um, so far, people were just themselves rebuilding a source of pain that they were just submitting to Koji, to CBS. We would like to use also our own Git uh, space to host all the spec files, everything, like, like we usually do uh, the Fedora side. Uh, we would like to use Fed Package, for example. So, Initially, um, so that's the, the pointer to the, the list discussion, the thread after that day. We had some, some bullet points in that mail. And uh, Matthias, not there today, but Matthias from uh, the Ops Tool SIG uh, volunteered to be a guinea pig with me just to test, it, test some solution. Because the solution that we uh, were using for Git, for Git.centralog, is Git bit, but was not really. Um, something we wanted to consider for, for, the, for everything, for the special tools group and for us. So initially we tested Gitty, um, which I personally like a lot. Uh, I still have the spec file that I maintain myself because we still have one instance internally. Uh, we tested Gitty with Matthias and it was fine. Gitty supports plenty of uh, authentication, uh, SAML token, open ID, so it works quite okay. Uh, it's really easy to package and deploy and configure. Uh, it supports Git LFS out of the box. So um, if you need to store binary blobs uh, through Git, you don't want to, to, to store your blobs in Git itself. But Git LFS allows you to just automatically uh, have pointer with the commit hash, put the hash of the source, and put the source aside. Like, in fact, reinventing the lookaside solution from Fedora, but natively uh, through Git. So Git does that. But um, after the first test, we'd say some things change again, uh, even internally. So in January, uh, so one year ago, just uh, at Frozen, we announced that the Fedora team and the CentOS team internally uh, were just merging. And so why do we just want to keep things separate if we have the same colleagues in the same team? So suddenly we said, if people are like most of the CentOS contributors in the special group are Fedora contributors. I think that we just have some very few exceptions. But other than that, uh, 
all the contributor are federal contributor already. So if they could use exactly the same tooling, the same framework everywhere, that would be really helpful for them. So we said, oh, let's do something. Because uh, Fedora is using Pagure, uh, why not considering using Pagure ourselves? And we even decided to, do, to go a little bit further. Why not replicating all the source automatically between the two instances, between CentOS and Fedora? So we said maybe it's a good idea because some special interview in CentOS, for example, sometimes just want to use a Fedora iteration of a package because they need a newer version of a package in CentOS, like uh, in the Vertic, for example, OpenStack, that's the case. They need a newer version of package. So usually they use the Fedora branch and they want to branch to their own branch. If we could have that automatically on our side, it's easy to, to have a look at all the branches, all the difference. So that's why we decided to, to, to um, think about using uh, replication between the two instances. So for that, we needed something that Pagur could not do on its own. Uh, Pagur just used uh, plain Git on file system, <coughs> if you have already installed Pagur, or previous version at least, up to version 4. And it's using git Ally just to refresh the access control, meaning that if you have, uh, you had the joy already of working on, on src.org and you have a new project, the time needed to compute the whole access control is just waiting, 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 try later. So we said, with a number of packages that is really, really time consuming and a little bit useless to recompute uh, the whole Gitalite thing. So with Patrick, Patrick is uh, Patrick Autovec, uh, no, he's probably in the other room. Uh, we had a discussion at Flock to Fedora in August, and it was announced that the goal was to indeed, indeed uh, replicate everything between Fedora and CentOS. And also tackle the other problem that was the Gitalite refresh for the access control is in existing Pagur. So um, the idea was, that was our goal, uh, first on the staging instance and next um, still uh, to be coming, but on the production instance. On the CentOS side, we just have all the CentOS branches that we, on the CentOS side, we allow contributor to push to, but deny everything else, so branch protection. And on the Fedora side, the same thing, they can write to, uh, to master and basically rely the Fedora branches and the Apple branches, but deny everything else. But still having all the branch being synchronized between the, the two instances. So, um, a, a recap on Pagur authentication itself. For CentOS, we are just, re well, we don't want to reinvent the wheel because we are converging more and more the infrastructure with Fedora, so reusing what is used already. So if you are a federal contributor, you know that there is a federal accounting system, FAST. We have that in CentOS, except that we call that ACO, just to not confuse people, because it's still, it's FAST package, it's FAST um, underlying program, but it's our own instance with our own groups and user, but we call that ACO. And Pagel use, for the web UI, just use OpenID. So we just connect through Ypsilon, like at the Fedora side, and you get uh, everything synchronized, your SSH key that is declared uh, at ACO in FAST, your group membership, etc. Uh, it gets everything. And um, the only difference is, I will cover that just after, we have a difference with the SSH authentication uh, because we wanted to get rid of GitOlight completely uh, and do some check on the fly when you want to push. So we, ju we just have a specific binary from RepoSpanner, we'll cover that later. So, um, Patrick, uh, decided to start working on the new tool, which is, which you can still use outside of Pagure, by the way. So if you just want to, you can use that on 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 the side. <coughs> uh, called Repo Spanner. So basically, it's a cluster of Git storage. So you need multiple nodes in a cluster, and it will automatically replicate. It will uh, vote. Um, it has a concept of region. Um, it uses HTTPS as transport, so everything is TLS encrypted, meaning that you also need certificate for admin uh, command um, on the repo spanner instance um, and some certificates are um, restricted to regions or repository for example. So you can use that uh, natively or you can also plumb that into into Pagano 5. So 
It's a different kind of rowing, and that's the one that Patrick did. Real the fly, just if you have a look at, uh, at the. It's a nice one, I like it. I decided it's so nerdy and geeky to have the original one here. So, uh, Patrick, the, when we had discussion, discussion in August, just after Flock, we decided to have something like that. With, that's uh, the, the, the first discussion about how Pagir should work with um, uh, a post manner. Um, as, you, well, as you see or not, depending where you are uh, sitting in the audience, but the idea was to completely get rid of Peter Line, meaning that on the fly, there is a SSHD key helper that is calling the Pagir API for, for a hook and let you have access or not to push to some branches. So bye-bye Gitolite completely, it just use uh, the API on the fly, uh, meaning that it's really fast to have access to the repository now. Because think about, I think that Fedora has something like 14 or, 14 or 15,000 Git repository. Uh, on CentOS it's really small, we have only 6,000 and something. So the time needed to compute was quite a little bit, and now it's really, really fast. So if you have using uh, Pegger 5 already on the Fedora side, you see that it's for most of the, the, the package and the, the, the repository that will migrate to, to uh, repo spanner that's really fast. Uh, one thing that it brings for us is not great to have the source synchronized. No, uh, what we wanted uh, was also have automatic access control for the special tools group. We didn't want to call the API of Pegger and granting people to have access to some branches or whatever. It's fully automatic. So um, we decided on both sides of the project, so Fedora and CentOS, to, <coughs> for the slash RPM namespace, uh, to implement a specific rule that is always valid. Um, for the C something branch name for CentOS, on the CentOS side, your C name, and then you can put everything after as a uh, suffix, you have, if you're a member of that C group, you have access. You can automatically, if the branch doesn't exist, you can create the branch and push to the branch. If you are not a member of that C, you are just denied. That means that it's, it solves a lot of administrative on our side because it's automatic, which is the part I love, as is admin when the things are automatic. Um, I said we are denying on our side everything to push to the federal branch, and I forgot, of course, Apple, Apple itself is also uh, denied at our side, but we are still uh, synchronizing everything. And federal is doing the same, but in reverse, so we work in sync. So, just one example um, we have multiple special tools groups, let's say a special tools group cloud. So, in the cloud, we have plenty of things like audio. But audio is moving fast, so they have a new release every six months. And um, they need to also have their own branch per release. We don't need to create that because they still have access. So they still maintain some CentOS 6 or CentOS 7, and by default, as soon as the package exists, a repository exists, they have access to CCloud and whatever they want. So that could be audio queens, and that was audio Rocky or Pike, whatever. So it's fully automatic. The good thing is that it's also synchronized directly as soon as the branch is created on our side, it's automatically pushed uh, to, um, to uh, Fedora. Uh, same thing happened for the local side cache, because we still need to allow the, the project to push their source um, to the local side cache. So once again, we decided to just reuse more or less what Fedora is using. And I would like to thank Brian, because he worked on that, um, modifies uh, uploaded CGI script. Uh, we just go a little bit further than what Fedora is doing at the moment. So it still uh, use X509 uh, uh, authentication for the push, so the alert push. So it's the one that you get from uh, ACO, basically. Uh, it's the one that you get normally on disk already if you, uh, if you set a cert and you have your certificate that you use for something else like building for example. But what it does is that on the fly, um, the, the Python backend on our side is also verifying live uh, through ACO if you are a member of a group or not. So it just doesn't validate that your certificate is valid, but also if you are a member of where you want to push to. If no, we will deny it. If yes, of course, you will be authorized to push. And the uh, other path is slash sources to the package name and then the branch. So that it's easier if you just want to browse. Uh, the three, you will see cl clearly even the source of your branch and not everything in one shot like on the Fedora side. So, 
So that's one of the things that we want, we work on, and we went more or less live, at least with the staging instance, uh, in October. We announced that on the center's level list to have a um, reaction from people, especially from contributors. We got some good feedback, some good remark uh, that then we discussed with um, uh, Pierre Riff, the, the background maintainer, just to see how we can solve some of the, the, the issue. Uh, because a lot of people are just rebuilding also source from git.center.org and moving that to another solution means that they need to adapt also their framework, their tooling, their tool chain. So what's next? Well, the first bullet point should be migrating to production. Because at the moment, if you have a look at git.center.org, it's still the old, very old git blit instances. So we, um, we had other five to fight. Uh, but we are just thinking with the uh, upstream Red Hat because they are pushing all the sources to us. And of course, you don't push to Git Blick like you push to Pagur because Pagur needs an API goal to create a repository first, etc. So we, we just need also to adapt the toolchain um, for them just to push. But once it's fully validated, we just announce publicly the date and we'll switch everything. Um, if you go actually to git.stg.center.org, we see that everything is kept in sync already. So um, everything that is pushed to git to the central world is automatically pushed to the other one. You just have uh, uh, um, our bash script using a loop and I, not I notify a nursing deep at the back. It's still working fine. Um, we test it also with some uh, special interviews group uh, a member like Bob will test that a lot. I mean, he's almost using that since that day um, for the alt arch and especially ArmaGFP specific patches that we need to bring in the package. Um, and the first time he tested, um, we automatically looked at um, the federal side and oh my god, my commit automatically landed on the other side, that's fun. <laughs> so, um, same for the reverse. So, so the next step, um, once we have the, the everything ready for Git, we would like to also enforce a rule that suddenly in Koji, nothing should be allowed to be built from source of PM, except scratch build, of course. Uh, scratch build, scratch build. Everything should go through Git exclusively, but we need some um, uh, client tooling to be available because if you are contributor to Fedora, you know FedPackage. But FedPackage expects a specific layout. If you if we have a look at, for example, a HTTP package or whatever the name of the package, but HTTP is a good example always. You will see that the, the way of Fedora is doing it, everything is flat. So you have the spec file and you have uh, all the patches directly in the tree. While for historic region and legacy region in CentOS, if you have a look at HTTPD, you will see sources, dash, and then you have all the patches, and spec, and then the spec file. So that means that if you try to use that package against uh, CentOS, at the moment it would not work because it's not expecting the file at the same place. Same for the, um, the, the file used to, to get the, the source uh, in the lookaside cache. And also, it would need to know exactly which TL certificate to use because it's not the same um, as for Fedora. Well, Fedora switched to kernel DOS, but um, we still need, we still to have something ready. So the good news is that um, uh, Brian again worked with uh, the Ash Package and Fed Package maintainer to bring that logic so that with one tool, that would be one tool to run them all. So Fed Package would be able to understand exactly center side and Fedora side, and so you would. would with one tool just to work back and forth between uh, all instances and, and submit build to Koji on the federal side or on the central side um, transparently. Um, by the way, we need feedback. Uh, Brian sent a mail to the center's level list about that, so the more feedback we, we get, the, more, the, the happier we are. So, um, Next on the plan after that is some, uh, something that is also a bullet, uh, pain point at the moment for a special interest group, that's the feedback we got a lot. Um, when they tag in Koji to release, it's not automatic that package land on, on, on Miro because there is a signing process um, in, the, um, in between that is taking too much time to be honest at the moment. So we are aware of the issue and we are trying to um, change, adapt that uh, adapt the process um, very soon to be able to sign automatically and push to middle uh, network. Um, so we we are investigating the solution. One that is of course on the short list is the same as for us, so CBO, 
which needs to be uh, a little bit adapted, it seems, uh, to run on, on center cell. It would run, but I know it doesn't run, it doesn't run on Fedora, so I don't know if Fedora would adapt it for a newer Fedora release or change something else. That's something we can discuss together because we are now more or less in the same team. So, that means that um, it's not a secret. We are collaborating more and more with the Fedora Infra team. Uh, we are, by the way, the same team, uh, officially. Um, we still use the, the different authentication system, but the same, uh, no, we use the same authentication system, different database, different instances. So more and more tooling are used in the center side. And reverse is true also. From the center side, uh, we try to collaborate more with Fedora about what we have running, what was good on, on our side and not on their side. And so we bring also experience like um, we have a lot of discussion regarding monitoring, better monitoring, etc. cetera. So um, I wanted to, uh, to say thank you uh, mainly to Patrick, Dr. Vec. Uh, who basically is involved in all the package as you see there, so RepoSpanner, Empire, uh, Ypsilon, because we use Ypsilon as an IDP provider for OpenID, uh, etc. So thank, uh, thanks Patrick, thanks to the Pingu, Pierre the maintainer of Pagur, uh, not there today, but pretty sure that he will be uh, at FOSDEM. And in fact, um, more collaboration with Fedora, which is a great, a great um, point for us more and more working with them and collaborating with them. Um, I think that's it on my side. So if you have questions, we have plenty of time. If no, easy for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>